Welcome back to another video. You might have asked yourself the question, do I even need a compressor? So I asked my best friend, Travis, if he would uh, come over and help me explain or maybe show whether uh, if you do need a compressor or whether you don't need a compressor, or you might not even care. So with that said, I I'm, I'm, I know I'm I use compressors a lot and and you I use, never do right you, you kind of rarely yeah you do a lot less <laughs> a lot less than I do right um, so we have three different ones here we have the CS2 this that was uh, Britt Mason's at one time who uh, some he played on a couple songs oh, a long okay. time ago yeah that's right um, then we have a Boss CS3 mm -hmm. pretty common Did, is that just kind of like the newer version of it or whatever I, I just bought it on reverb gotcha. and that's it just arrived like two days ago oh so and it had been a long time since i played well, it's one shiny it, it is yeah it's it was taken well no one used it basically um and then we of course have an ego compressor made by some company in indiana that's right um now let's talk about some controls real quick attack it's the same basic stuff attack and sustain you have on now all three of them the cs3 has a tone control that believe it or not it different values, but the same style control as a tube scraper. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, looking at the schematic. So literally when you roll it down, you're taking off more highs. Okay. When you roll it up, you're adding more highs. Okay. So it's not because I'm on yours. It's more of kind of like a presence. Kind My, of thing, yeah. Right? Mine is more like in it. Cause this is based off like a Ross Dynacomp type of thing. Okay. And in those circuits, they have this filter that it, the idea that they used back then was we need to get rid of some noise. So how do we do it? We take, take off some it, Yeah, yeah. Makes so I'm sense. like, yeah, but what if you don't run your compressor wide open and you want a little bit more sparkle? So, okay, you know, nice. Just let that sparkle come back. Let's in. do it. Come on. So, all right. So, um, let's do some. I guess I would do an exaggerated setting. Where would you start from? Clean, no compression. <laughs> all right, and that's the video. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, one thing real quick that I kind of want to say is the point of a compressor. Sure. I'll be honest. And to you, it's so commonplace because you've used them your whole life. But like. Well, that might, I, you know, <laughs> when I was like three. Yeah. Like, but yeah. how do you know? Do you remember them? <laughs> I do. Yeah. Okay. I stand correct. <laughs> but with me, I never used one. And here I am at the time when I first started working for you. Yeah. Your number one selling press or pedal was the ego compressor. Yeah, and it still I does had, really good for us. Yeah, and I had no idea what a compressor even did. <laughs> you know, I really didn't. So, in the most basic sense, you're like, does it air up tires? <laughs> yeah, right. Where, where do you plug the air <laughs> nozzle yeah. in? You gotta have a coiling cable. <laughs> but in the most basic sense, and correct me if I'm wrong, dumbing it down to a guitar player's standpoint, and I'm referring to me there, um, you're evening out dynamics and level. So volume level. So for instance, if you have a guy who plays with his fingers and sometimes on the lower notes, he tends to, but on the higher notes, he kind of plucks. Well, a lot of times that's not going to mesh real well together. And right. it's just going to be all over the place to where a compressor can kind of I, I kind of say tames the valleys and, right. you know, or tames the peaks and boosts the valleys or whatever. How right. do you want to put it? Smooths so, it out. Yeah, smooths it out. So another thing to kind of keep in mind is if you play with a lot of gain, you may not need a compressor as much as if you play mostly clean. And that's another thing mm -hmm. Brian taught me because a lot of these country guys, when they play kind of clean, they want a compressor. If they're not real loud. If, yeah. yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. If they're not real loud. But to me, whenever I'm running an amp wide open... If I use a compressor, it kind of smushes everything. Right. So it almost gets too compressed. Yeah. Which is, I mean, you know, we've talked about that before, where that's why I put the blend knob on there. Cause sometimes, especially the louder I get, I might just want a touch of compression. Right. And the sustain of the tack knob don't do, they just don't do that. But they, they really don't. You I mean you're really no matter how you set it, basically imagine that you have like if your signal, when you hit it real hard spikes yeah even with with the attack and sustain all the way down it's still going to like kind of stop it from going too much yeah. so you kind of lose you still lose some dynamics and here let's just uh let's pull out the boss here since it doesn't have a blend knob roll it all the way down oh sorry no you're fine oh 
Vamos. Back on. So it's it's still kind of limiting your right. dynamics when you dig into it. You yeah. don't get that spike in volume. Right. Which um, sometimes is a cool thing, but you kind of when you want that spike in volume. That's the thing, but yet you still want compression. Right. You know. And right. my turn to name drop. All right. <laughs> Talking to Vince Gill one time, but um, <laughs> I think he uses CSA. Actually. He does. He does. Yeah. He absolutely does. Because I asked him. I said. So what do you use on, you know, obviously I hear a lot of compression and, and when you, especially when you use a Stratocaster, right, he right. said, he said, I'm just using that old boss unit. I said, don't you ever wish you had more control? And he said, Travis, I'm just used to it. <laughs> <laughs> so but, when you're as good as I am, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. And then he asked me if I wanted to go get donuts. <laughs> True story, <laughs> but <laughs> I was on the clock. Somebody made, wouldn't let me go. Made, it made sense. I mean, talking about compressors. Hey, you want some donuts? The man was hungry. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but <laughs> this one does not have any type of blend. So the CS3 does not. Yeah. Okay, so what's the difference between these two? Um, this they're different circuits. Are they actually yeah, completely different? They circuits? are different circuits. Yeah, this is using a that chip. I forget what the CS2 is using. This but chip? It's not, it's not a, this chip. Um, it's really not. But it is, uh, I think, if I recall right, it's been a while since I've seen the schematic. I think it's more along the lines of what you're going to have with a Rosser uh, okay. a, a Dynacomp style. But I don't think it's the same chip. I, but I could be wrong. I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments and hate, hate me forever. <laughs> so... Um, but anyways, let's try the same thing. Let's throw everything down except for the volume. And I'll just kind of play the same sure. lick or whatever. Back on. That one seems like it's a little better at that. Absolutely. Yeah. It's way... This word gets so overused. <laughs> it's more musical. <laughs> but I mean... It's it, chewy but, but, yet transparent. Yeah, chewy transparent. With a woody... With a hint of wood. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And haunting. <laughs> Very haunting type of clean. But no, this... This... Actually, it's a good sounding unit. <laughs> but no, it actually... To me, it sounds way better than that one. I don't know. Yeah. That's just my ear. Um, and then the ego... It's kind of an unfair comparison because you have the blend control so no matter how i set the sustain and attack still going to be pretty much the clean signal right you know <laughs> right so go figure but um you know but we'll add it in that no let's do the same thing let's let's roll the attack sustain all the way down we'll turn the blend all the way up and uh we'll try the same thing all right So still some more flavoring in there. Absolutely. So, which, you know, I would expect it to do that. Um, of course, with a blend. So that's completely zero compression, correct? Very, yeah. Or very pretty little, much, yeah. yeah. I mean. Oh, did you want to keep turning it off? Um, yeah, so let me turn it off again. Now, one more time on. So a little bit of sweetness. Just, that's exactly what I was going to say. It sweetens it up. Like that one, I dig that the most because it's not so, like, I'll be honest. I don't like the sound of that real squishy. Even, like, I can, it's gotten so bad to where I can hear it on a right. lot of records and right. a lot of live performances where... I don't care for it, you know, to where this still sounds like it's smoothed out, sweetened up, but it doesn't have that real squishy, just, right. well, compressed sound. Right. Not at that setting for sure. <laughs> right. Um, so let's, let's go the opposite way. Let's turn the sustain, the attack all the way up and go the complete opposite. So let's start with the CS2.
it's see what drove very, very chewy. Yeah, what drove me nuts about that was I wanted this note to be way louder than this note. Right. But it's going to and it bring wasn't. Those, yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. And that, yeah. So to me, that chokes me. Like you were saying, it takes mm. the dynamics away. It does. But. Yeah. Now keep in mind, this is. <laughs> I actually like the the chip inside here to nerd out a little bit. It's from a company called That. I don't know why they're called that. I'm sure it's an acronym for something. But it's uh, they they actually it's it's actually a pretty cool chip. I'm just not a fan of the way it was implemented. Okay. Let's go with from there. Yeah. But I mean, yes, it's place. I'm not knocking the CS3. Right. Ooh. So squishy. It's yeah, way more. <laughs> I feel like you can't even convey the fact that I'm playing at different dynamics on cross different <laughs> it's, strings. It's all the same. Yeah. yeah, if you play light, it sounds like that. If yeah. you play hard, it sounds like that. Uh, I promise yeah. I'm varying my dynamics. But. So and and the ego, of course. So. So still pretty squishy. Too squishy for my liking right. at that setting. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But at the same time, <laughs> I wanted to see that. No that's brutal. <laughs> no, noise floor. If we just listen to okay. the noise floor. So nice. A little quieter. Yeah, absolutely. A little quieter. Quite. It's. I don't know how much it's going to pick up there, but in the room, it's quite a bit quieter. Right, right. It's your pedal, so you're going to say, it's a little Well, yeah. It's, it's pro <laughs> probably the best compressor you could find. No. Hashtag industry standard. <laughs> so, I mean, okay, so let me let me show you what I would how I Yeah, would please do. Cause, I mean, this is this is your bag. Do you want a Plectrum? Huh. It's I'll from be... a local recording studio. I've never been there, but I have to pick. You know, this is this would be your 90s setting, 90s <laughs> Need to strap. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> me, me and straps, we just uh, no. At least you got locks on this one. That's true. You got to. Now that's way, Squishy. way more than what you'd ever need. Um, the attack kind of changes that. The bunk, the, the bunk, like right. Mine it too. So. <laughs> versus uh see that sounds good to my ear. oh you know what let me turn the blend all the way up sorry <laughs> my fault uh with the you forgot one <laughs> There it is. <laughs> With the attack all the way down. Oops, wrong one. <laughs> but I mean, you know, back in the '90s, that's that's what everyone was doing. They're using a ton of compression, and mm -hmm. not so much anymore. So now, you know, what would, they do is just on the on the back end. Yeah, more a, a, you know, yeah, a mastering or whatever. Yeah, I mean, when whenever yeah. I've recorded, Empirical Labs makes a rack unit called the Distressor. Sounds yeah. great on guitars. Mm -hmm. So I I would never, in that situation, put it on, on a pedal board. But. Yeah, and that's a bit of a different type of compression, too. Yeah, complete. Yeah. So, um, like, there's an 1176 that's real popular mm -hmm. called, like, the Cali 76 or something. Right. Which is more like a studio type of compressor where mm -hmm. it will squash, but it's just a different thing mm -hmm. all together that's the one that all the radio stations used to have back in the days 1176 yeah that was one of so the it would hit that before it hit the radio waves to even out those volume levels right which is what they use the cali 76 point out to okay really no <laughs> mm. 
So yeah. So so what I do, I will. Um, I'll just run the blend just about where I start hearing it and feeling it. That's still a little bit too much for me. Just because it. You know, it just yep. it just adds some sweetening to it without being like a compressed effect, right? You know, versus you know, let's let's run the boss here, <laughs> which I mean, again, not knocking it's it, but on it's, or off. it's got <laughs> so much compression. Whoops. It's just, it's an unmistakable sound once you're familiar with it. But, right. you know, like I said, it, the, I had no idea what it was before I started working for you. And it was like, do I need one of these? And then my answer is no, but I don't play a lot. I don't play clean a lot. So, so uh, yeah, I remember years ago, back in the 90s, that thing's on in it. You can hear that. Shh. Yeah. Shh. <laughs> um, I remember I was playing a Battle of the Bands. Yes. 1995, I think, in Bridge Lick, Indiana, which is not what it sounds like. Larry Bird. Yeah. Um, the pride of French Lick. Yeah, he was. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so, for, so we were playing Battle of Bands there. We won, believe it or not. Got to open for Tracy Bird, of course. You know? What's she saying? <laughs> Chattahoochee. Chattahoochee. <laughs> No, that's Tracy. Right? No, that's Tracy Anderson. No, the watermelon crawl guy. Oh, Trace. I don't know, man. Trace Atkins. Nope, wrong one. Anyways, the point of that being is that um, there was a guitar player there. I had a well, I had this. I had this Telecaster. I forgot with, about with, this without thing. the without the hip shot. It's my first first Telecaster I ever had. Um, and I was playing through a PV solid state. Maybe it's called a bandit or something. Mm -hmm. I forget. It was a solid yeah. state or a it was a trans tube, something or other. Yeah. And, uh, I had like an RP one or five or something, right. Yeah. Something yeah. Like yeah. Those Digitech things. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 And I was like, dude, how are you going to sound like that? Or how are you getting your, you know, talking to other bands? And the guy had a rap pedal with the gain back down and a CS3 and he's like, there you go. Man. Yeah. It's, like it's compression, dude. It's compression and technique. <laughs> oh, you had to throw the technique in there. <laughs> well, well, yeah, because, because, you know, at the time I'm like, whoa, hold on. You know, you know, something stupid. I was, I was still learning the Brent Mason stuff. But you got yeah. to open up for the dude, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Snoop Dogg, but you won. Yeah. We're gonna open you up won. Snoop Dogg that time. Uh, but anyway, so that was my my first entry into compression, and from there, I just started realizing that it covered up a lot of mistakes. So I used a lot of compression. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but it also makes the mistakes louder too. It does, but, it, <laughs> but that that smoothness. I mean, you could if you go like do like like really, string talk and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So that's actually a good thing to show off. Like, like. Hold on, let me think of like play. Right? Yeah, yeah, you don't hear a lot of the, I call it string talk. I don't know what, it, what it's really called, but just, you know, when you can hear the left hand doing things, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. So I see what you're saying it, there. It made me feel like I was a better player mm -hmm. because it was. And let's face it, what it all boils down to is if, if you feel like you're a better player, you're more inspired and you're going right. to play more. Right. You know, so if yep. an effect makes you play more, then it does make you a better player. Arguably, yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> I, I missed. There we go. All right. So, anything else that you got on compressors before we throw no. a dirt pedal in front of this guy or no. in the back of this guy? I think I my knowledge has been exhausted on compression. <laughs> All right. And so let's. So the next. So the next question is, um, you know, ob obviously people are going to want to use dirt with it. Mm -hmm. uh, we there's another video on here I've already done called about. Do you want to run your your drive before or after your compressor? It might be run compressor before or after drive, something like that. But it's already on the channel, so I'm not going to really like demo that too much. But the idea being that even with a, a distortion pedal that's technically going to compress things albeit in a different way than that's compressing, mm -hmm. but it's still squashing down some of that stuff and right. then clipping the signal, which then creates distortion, et cetera, et cetera. So um, sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. So might as well do a uh, little demo. Why not? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I can I can feel. I don't know how well it's going to convey, but I can feel the compression yeah. just for, just from that. That's actually one of the things I like about a tube screamer. Well, me too. I mean, because it just feels kind of cool in, yeah. in certain circumstances. Even though, like a lot of people use it for like a, driving a driving a distortion channel, mm -hmm. it still has its place with clean amps in certain genres. Absolutely. So, I mean, you know, if you're playing Pantera, <laughs> bad choice. Yeah, bad choice. <laughs> Bad choice. But you know, if you're playing some Toby Keith, <laughs> actually, I think he's playing Hot Wired on some of that stuff. But anyways, if you're playing some of the older country, it just has like a hint of drive. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, uh, uh, this is Sparkle Drive or it's a TS9 of some sort. Right. So okay. At least back in the day. Anymore, it's probably Whatever. probably Pro Tools, or <laughs> yeah. yeah, Kempers, Kempers, yeah, and such. <laughs> so okay so let's let's go from that to let's go with all the compression of the boss cs3 go run ts9's on so noisy Hold a note out though. <laughs> Pretty much. I wasn't wearing a watch. The, the bad part is that the noise floor together is as loud as the note is. Oh yeah. Whoa, you're not exaggerating. Yeah. Yeah, so tons of noise yeah. there. We could throw some, you know, some noise gates of some sort on it, but be on that coming up later. Um, right, so by comparison, not that this is a Wampler commercial, but just for fun. Let's start with uh, TS9's on, right? Yep, mm -hmm. it's on. Start the blend down. So much more usable, much but, more usable, still a ton of compression. Right. And, and that's why, that's why I say it'd be too much for me because right. I'm getting a lot of compression just, you know, out of the tube screamer. And plus I normally, you know, we run our amps louder than that when we're gigging right. and there's never an always and never, never, but a lot of times the louder your amp, the more it compresses, right. you know, so in, in my situation. Yeah. So when I do that and a tube screamer on top, mm -hmm. it eliminates my need for compression. So let's um, just for 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 fun here, let's turn the amp way up. I'll attenuate it so okay. we're not getting killed. But driving it hard. But driving it hard, yeah. All right. Clap on, clap off. The clapper. All right. So now we're uh, in the bravado. We're turned up quite a bit to right where it just starts to uh, start distorting a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, let's hear what kind of compression that just the tube amp is going to get. Yeah. And again, since we're we're attenuated down quite a bit, it's about talking level actually in here mm -hmm. because we're you know, attenuating from the speaker. So you're not really going to get the speaker. compression from speakers and stuff like that. So this is just tube circuitry through the transformer. So it's a little bit different in real world right. practice, but it's, it's 90, still going to give you ninety-five percent. That's right. So that's right. So this is just the bypass just, signal. Just the bypass signal. So some, some hair there. A little bit of hair, but it's a different, it's still not the same type of squashing compression. Correct. Absolutely. It's just, um, it's just the best way to describe it is it kind of feels a little bit spongy, mm -hmm. maybe. Absolutely. And it has a little bit more sustain. Yes, sir. So if we add compression onto that, first of all, let's you want to add drive or just compression. Let's go, let's go all three. So okay. first of all, let's add drive. Okay, then we'll go, let's go to extreme CS3 full compression. <laughs> It messes with me a little bit. A little bit. Clink. Clink. I love that note. <laughs> and then uh, let's go again. Ego will run the blend down a little bit. I don't notice it that much. You Not know what I mean? Not as much, yeah. I yeah. mean, we could, we could crank up the blend and you'll hear it more, of course. So, so there you go. What about all three? Did we run all three? I don't think we ran gain and... Uh, all right, so let's go, we, let's we go gain. Which compressor you want to run on? Let's do the, you know... Um, okay, CS3 first. Yeah. Well, wow, that is noisy. Yes. Because check because basically real quick the reason why it's so noisy and a lot of people complain about compressors being noisy mm -hmm. is because any noise whatsoever is compressed and is amplified amplified and compressed yeah amplified up to the point of squashing down right so the threshold right right so and since the CS3 has so much more compression than that, than that uh, another style of you know okay Dyna Dynacomp or whatever. Then, um, I mean, then I'm yeah. noise. I mean, well, I've you changed could... my mind. Let's do the ego. <laughs> let's just for compress for compression's sake. <laughs> for compression's sake, let's compare. Compre <laughs> yep, that's noise. <laughs> Um, we'll go full, we'll full, full, blah, 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 full compressed right now. And then, um, we are, did we already do that? We didn't already do that. I don't we? think we okay, did. Okay, so. It caught me off guard because the other two, or whenever they were both cranked, mm -hmm. it took the life out of guitar playing. Totally. It just wasn't fun. Yeah. So whenever you dot down, I was expecting still to have that life sucked out of it. Right. I played, I was like, oh, okay, it's there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so one more fun thing to do. Two compressors. <laughs> So that's with TS9, just the two compressors by itself. Doesn't even sound like a guitar. <laughs> is that a side chain? I, uh, that is not a side chain, but that is, um, 
you know, if you like compression, that's one way of doing it. If that's the thing you're into. So, I mean, again, as you saw, anytime you have any sort of noise, whether it's a distortion pedal or an overdrive pedal or a boost pedal or a bad cable that's noisy, like you're you're going to have some noise with a compressor. Right, because it's going to bring that right back it, up and, and then the, squash it. Right, in the same way with any sort of drive, like let's, let's, do, do we have? So even with the DS9, there's a little bit of noise there just because. Oh, I didn't know. I was sorry. Yeah, yeah. so, so. Not that right. much because it's not a high gain device. Right. Right. But um, you know you're still gonna you're still gonna amplify some of that noise if that's a problem. But that's why you use, or you just never stop playing. You just noodle the whole time. That's why you use several different several different um, are you noise doing, gates. Are you, you doing know? a teaser for an upcoming video right now? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so that's why you use several different noise gates all in the chain, oh, all at God. one time. Eliminate all the noise. And uh, here's what it sounds like when you do that. Go ahead and play something real quick. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, no, seriously. I mean, you, you can um, use a noise gate, but that's on an upcoming video. This is a video about compression. Oh, yeah, and I forgot the decimator G. The G string, sorry. That's my decimator G. <laughs> that was dumb. That was dumb. Cut that. That's stupid. Uh, all right, so hope this video helped you. Hope you liked it. If you have any comments, questions, you can always comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell to be notified. Make sure you... That's basically all I got. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, rather. Yep. Oh, you could be listening, really. I know. Sometimes Unless you're reading some captions. people drive... Uh, you'll be reading captions. <laughs> some people drive down the road watching YouTube videos. Been there. Ooh. Uh, not watching, but listening, rather. Actually, I have seen some people watching YouTube videos as well. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, thanks for watching. See you next week, the new one.